So listen, I have a ton of questions about Rings of Power. Loved your work on it. But I definitely have to start with uh, how did Battlestar change your life? Because that's where I first like heard your music and became a fan. Battlestar Galactica was my first job as a composer. Um, to say that it changed my life is the understatement of the century. Um, realistically speaking, no one should let a 24 year old child score their big budget uh, reimagining of a sci fi classic. And uh, it was a combination of luck and hard work and diligence and uh, that I that I that I survived that gauntlet. And I did one episode, which happened to be 33. I worked on the miniseries, but then I happened to do episode one from season one, and then they let me do another episode. And they let me do another episode, and there it was. I mean, it, it, it was fascinating, because to me, Battlestar gave me half of the pieces that I needed to do a show like Rings of Power. Um, it, it forced me to learn so many modern techniques not only about production and samples and producing a score in the 21st century, but storytelling. I mean, Battlestar was, it doesn't sound it now, but then that was not how you scored sci-fi space operas on TV. It was a very modern approach. But the other half of my personality, the other half of my skill set is a much more traditional one. I studied under Elmer Bernstein. I studied under the guy who wrote the Ten Commandments, man. He, he scored Ghostbusters, it's on your shirt. So he taught me the absolute fundamentals of dramatic storytelling and orchestral writing and filmmaking and how to talk with a filmmaker. So you take that skill set, that very old school skill set. Suddenly I'm thrown into Battlestar Galactica. I'm learning all these modern things. And though there was a lot of orchestral writing, not really kind of a, a good school score. It was a very modern score at the time. But you can see how to do the Rings of Power on a television schedule in the modern era, it really took both of those sides of my personality and my experience um, to do that. And I, you know, Battlestar was everything to me, man. It opened doors. It, it taught me how to find my own voice as an artist. Um, and it, it made my name something that people were aware of much earlier in my career than than it would have otherwise. So I'm, I'm very grateful to everybody at that show for taking a chance on me because, boy, did they take a chance on me. No, 100%. Um, with Rings of Power, this is one of those, did you actually debate at all um, taking the job because of how many fans, like, the, you know what I mean? Like, there's so many fans that are going to have feelings either way. Or were you sort of like, this is, I, I'm doing this. This is the, the I, no. Steve, I was all in. The minute it was announced, <laughs> I was like, the minute it was announced, I thought, I have to do this. I, th I have to do this. And uh, it's funny because only later in press interviews, when people asked, well, what did you do? What about the pressure of following Howard Shore? That I thought, oh yeah, that was there. <laughs> But I was so excited to be able to tell part of Tolkien's Legendarium, you know, to be a part of this story coming to screen. I was so excited to do that, that it, it the, the pressure part of it never really occurred to me. Because um, if you think about it, right, if, if my brain were even wired to think that way, then I couldn't even get out of bed and come into the studio. I mean, you can't get out of bed and say, write a piece of music that's going to be as good as the Shire theme. I mean, dude, you can't. So it really wasn't even, I, I think I accidentally put blinders on and just thought, I'm going to dive in and let's, who's Nori? I'm going to write a theme for this character. L who's Galadriel? Like, let's, let's figure this out. Let me, let me write something for her. So in a way, my naivete helps me not to go back to Battlestar, but I mean, Battlestar, I was 24 and it's like, oh, you can do one episode. All right. Well, if you think about it, like if I, if I succeed, I can have a career. And if I fail, it's over. I can't be creative in that environment. I, I was just grateful to have a story to tell that inspired me and have some skill set that I have honed to think, let me use those skills and tell this story. Like I'm so lucky. It's gratitude, man. It's gratitude is what I felt. 
more than anything else. Um, did you have? Do you have a favorite uh, theme or scene from season one that you're especially proud of? That if someone hasn't seen the show, that that's the piece of music they should seek out first. You no, know, it's very hard to say. There are so many that I'm delighted by. I, I love. The- coming into Numenor in 103, coming into Casa Doom in, in 102. I feel like those were places where I get to make a big statement and say, welcome to this version of Middle Earth. Um, with that said, those are not my favorite moments. My favorite moments are much more subtle. They're, they're character moments. When Elrond in um, the fourth episode, four or five, somewhere in there, he comes up to... Uh, Durin, who's mad at his father, and he just says, hey, you think you have it bad? Like, you know, my dad was a star, (laughs) you know, and he has this moment of bonding with him. And it's just this de-escalation of tension. And you love these two characters and I get to use both their themes. Moments like that really shine. But if I had to pick one, it might be the end of the first episode where Galadriel makes a decision about whether or not she's going to go to Valinor. And she like looks in the lens and it's one of these moments that is so lyrical and operatic that it that without the music it wouldn't work um because you you have to feel emotion so intense um and it's such poetic beautiful imagery that might be the one yeah. that, that's where i thought you know i've introduced this theme for her early in the episode and and i get to pay it off in this beautiful bookend that that first episode has a lot of those kind of moments. I'm, I'm curious. I've spoken to a lot of composers. Uh, how are you writing music to the script or do you sort of uh, wait till you have footage? Like talk a little bit about your writing process. My mentor was Elmer Bernstein, as I already mentioned, and he used to watch a movie a dozen times and he would say the movie tells you what it needs. I, I am like that. Uh, scripts are great. I understand structure and intention, um, but to start writing only from a script bypasses the contributions of actors, lighting, the DP, the editors, the effects, the production design, costumes, they all influence where my brain goes. So I have to see it. I'm a very visual person. Um, and often if I write with, from a script, I'll, I'll end up going the wrong direction because all those other people add, add to it. Um, it's a little different with Rings of Power because I, I feel like I knew that IP so well, I was tempted to start, but even then I I didn't start until they sent me um, episodes I could look at. Uh, I definitely have to ask you uh, about season two and if you have already started composing. I have. That's about all I can say at the moment, but it's going to be awesome. Yeah, I'm confident they're not going to screw this thing up, you know, but how long did, did you how long did you actually spend doing music for season one? And was it something that you were just focused on or were you also looking at other projects at the same time yeah i i was able to shuffle my deck to focus fully on this and in fact uh you know i've been quite open as i talk about i have a support staff that helps me do tv it's the way you make tv uh scores in the 21st century but i wrote every cue in the rings of power i i shuffled the deck so that they would help me on everything else um because i really wanted to craft something where every moment was completely bespoke to the themes, to the characters. Um, It was a challenge. I'm not going to lie. I I think because of COVID uh, disrupting production schedule, the composer got hired real late on the Rings of Power. So I got hired and I had nine months to write nine hours. Um, So I got hired and I started right away. And I did an hour a month. And so in that nine months, I was in this studio writing anywhere from 12 to 15 hours a day, every day. And I took no more than seven or maybe 10 days off, took a few days off for Christmas holiday, Thanksgiving day, but that's it, man. I mean, that was it. And and the toll on my mind, on my body, um, um, on my muscles, uh, it, it was intense. It, it There's a reason that people don't write nine hours of music in, in nine months. Um, and uh, I mean, you know, if that was a feature film or a series of films like that would be years you could do that over years yep. um so that was a that was a that was a marathon but like i said i feel like i was uniquely positioned all my years studying with elmer and just studying classic film 
And yet, what was the majority of my experience has been television. I started in Battlestar. We did 20 episodes a year in Battlestar. Um, so in a way, like I was uniquely positioned to be able to just run that marathon and, and survive it. And I'm proud of it. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I think the score benefited from that kind of total, almost monomaniacal focus that I gave it. Yeah, listen, man, I thought you did a great job with the score and uh, I'm already looking forward to he hearing whatever you come up with for season two. On that note, I need to stop. I'm just going to say uh, I really am a big fan of your work and thank you for what you do. Uh, thanks. Uh, really great speaking with you, Steve.